डी स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू टेन स्टैंडर्ड हिस्ट्री यूनिट सेवन फ्रीडम मूवमेंट इन दिस वीडियो लेट अस डिस्कस अबाउट द राइज ऑफ नेशनलिज्म द एस्टैब्लिशमेंट ऑफ इंडियन नेशनल कांग्रेस एंड इट्स ऑब्जेक्टिव्स मॉडरेट्स एंड देयर डिमांड्स रेडिकल्स एंड देयर वे ऑफ फाइटिंग अगेंस्ट द ब्रिटिश पार्टीशन एंड विड्रॉवल ऑफ द डिविजन ऑफ बंगाल revolutionaries and their way of fighting against the british let's begin this lesson with the rise of nationalism the name of the lesson is freedom movement indian freedom movement is considered as an important chapter in the history of india when we study about the history of india Indian freedom movement is very important chapter before this movement we have studied various fightings against the foreign occupation but these fightings were guided by their political goals even though many kings fought against the foreign occupation but their fights were guided by their political goals their fights were not guided by freedom slowly they fought against the foreign occupation then it can be considered as the beginning of nationalism these movements started especially during the second half of 19th century because during the second half of 19th century many developments took place for example the expansion of communication and roads expansion of english education journalism and the birth of cultural associations these were the important developments that took place during the second half of 19th century but people suffered a lot with the famines and hardship created by the british rule people suffered a lot because of this british rule many farmers and tribal agitations that took place during this period is a proof of this many farmers and tribals fought against the british which shows that the people suffered a lot by this british rule indians for the first time they fought against the british in their 1857 many indians who suffered in the hands of east india company started a strong resistance against the british in their 1857 we have already discussed that lesson as a result it ended the rule of east india company in their 1858 and started the rule of the queen of england in 1858 after first war of indian independence the rule of east india company came to an end the rule of the british queen started the secretary of state for india was appointed to look after the administration of india along with this the act of 1861 was considered as an important one because with the implementation of this act the participation of indians in the legislation process was started as a result of all these the educated youth started sharing the idea of nationalism with ordinary people nationalism found its root as a concrete concept indian national congress is the institutional expression of this this were all about the rise of nationalism this were all about the conditions 
ಬಿಫೋರ್ ದಿ ಎಸ್ಟಾಬ್ಲಿಷ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ನ್ಯಾಷನಲ್ ಕಾಂಗ್ರೆಸ್ ಲೆಟ್ಸ್ ಮೂವ್ ಟು ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ನ್ಯಾಷನಲ್ ಕಾಂಗ್ರೆಸ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ಸ್ಟಡೀಡ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ವಾರ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ಇಂಡಿಪೆಂಡೆನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಇಯರ್ ಏಯ್ಟೀನ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಇಟ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಟು ದ ಡೆವಲಪ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಪಾಲಿಟಿಕಲ್ ಅವೇಕನಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇನ್ಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಹೆಲ್ಪ್ಡ್ ಆರ್ ಇಟ್ ಇನ್ಕ್ರೀಸ್ಡ್ political consciousness among indians many educated youth provided leadership to various associations which had nationalistic outlook many indians who got education they provided leadership to various associations like the hindu mela all india association purnas ಪೂರ್ಣ ಸಾರ್ವಜನಿಕ ಸಭಾ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ಅಸೋಸಿಯೇಷನ್ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ದಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಅಸೋಸಿಯೇಷನ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ವರ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟೆಡ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ದಿ ಎಸ್ಟಾಬ್ಲಿಷ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ನ್ಯಾಷನಲ್ ಕಾಂಗ್ರೆಸ್ ನ್ಯೂಸ್ ಪೇಪರ್ಸ್ ಅಪೋಸ್ಡ್ ದ ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಗವರ್ನಮೆಂಟ್ ಮೆನಿ ಲೀಡರ್ಸ್ ದೇ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟೆಡ್ ದೇ ದೇ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟೆಡ್ ದೇರ್ ಓನ್ ನ್ಯೂಸ್ ಪೇಪರ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಅಪೋಸ್ಡ್ the decisions of the government during the period of lord lytton here lord lytton vernacular press act was introduced who introduced vernacular press act lord lytton introduced vernacular press act what was the main aim of this act the main aim of this act was to curb the independence of the independent press it shows that vernacular press act tried to curb the freedom of indians all these developments finally led to the establishment of indian national congress all these development that took place after 1857 revolt led to the establishment of indian national congress the establishment of indian national congress was considered as an important event in the history of india because it changed the direction of indian political history Indian National Congress was established in the year 1885 at Bombay the convention which was held at Bombay this Indian National Congress was established the first president of Indian National Congress was W C Banerjee the founder of Indian National Congress was A O Hume A O Hume played an important role in the formation of indian national congress who was ao hume ao hume was a retired british civil servant and he met political leaders in the cities like madras bombay and calcutta and discussed the various issues of public importance before the establishment of indian national congress in the year 1885 ao hume the founder of indian national congress met important leaders in cities like madras bombay and calcutta he discussed the various issues of public importance as a result of all these developments all these deliberations the congress declared that achieving national unity as its primary aim during its first national convention the first national convention which was held at bombay in their 1885 indian national congress declared that achieving national unity as its primary aim it tried to achieve unity among the diverse cultural and social paths of india it tried to 
build unity among indians the leaders of this period also had the commitment to achieve it the leaders of indian national congress they worked together to fulfill this aim or this objective during that time many newspapers were published in vernacular language and enabled discussion on various social issues as a result various political issues reached the people because of this newspapers various political issues reached the people very easily during that time the british introduced a new policy which was known as divide and rule policy to break the unity emerging among the people with the development of nationalism due to all these developments nationalism slowly developing in india in order to break this in order to break that nationalism the british introduced divide and rule policy the main aim of divide and rule policy was to break the unity emerging among the people british started implementing various strategies to cause disunity among hindus and muslims still the indian national congress continued with its focus on creating unity among indians in spite of all these efforts made by the british indian national congress continued its efforts on creating unity among indians but unfortunately during the later part of 19th century differences of opinions arose in the indian national congress due to their differences in ideology belief execution styles they are identified as moderates and radicals there was a difference in the indian national congress indian national congress was divided into two groups moderates and radicals this division took place because of differences in ideology because of differences in belief because of differences in execution styles now let us discuss about moderates first group of indian national congress was moderates what is the age of moderates traditionally the first 20 years of indian national congress was known as the age of moderates that means from 1885 to 1905 first 20 years of the indian national congress is called as the age of moderates there were many moderate leaders the important among them were uh, important among them were wc banerji mahadeva govind ranade surendranath banerji dada bai navaruji gopal krishna gokale these were the important moderate leaders moderates had faith in the rule of british and judiciary they had respect in the british rule and british judiciary they used to table their demands with the framework of the constitution through prayer and requests in order to fulfill their demands moderate followed the methods moderates followed the constitutional methods like prayers and requests they tried to bring in political awareness among the people they organized to public meetings they discussed various burning issues and submitted memorandums to the government they submitted memorandums demanding cutting down of military expenditure development of indian industries providing good education and programs for poverty alleviation these were 
द इम्पॉर्टेंट डिमांड्स ऑफ मॉडरेट्स हु एर मॉडरेट्स वट वर दे डिमांड्स द डिमांड्स ऑफ मॉडरेट्स वेर फर्स्ट वन कटिंग डाउन ऑफ मिलिट्री एक्सपेंडिचर सेकेंड वन डेवलपमेंट ऑफ इंडियन इंडस्ट्रीज थर्ड वन प्रोवाइडिंग गुड एजुकेशन फोर्थ वन प्रोग्राम्स फॉर पॉवर्टी एलिवेशन दिस वेर the demands of the moderates moderates have contributed more in the freedom movement of india because these moderates were the first to study the ill effects of the british rule on india they explained the drain of resources of india into england through scientific statistics they had given scientific statistics regarding the drain of wealth of india and that theory was called as drain theory according to them the indian resources went to england because of increasing the import reducing the export the british facilitated the draining out of precious indian resources into england drain theory was put forward by dada bhai nauru ji dada bhai nauru ji was the moderate leader just like him just like uh, dada bhai nauru ji r c dat also published books explaining the draining of indian resources into england in this way the draining of indian resources into england were explained by dada bhai nauru ji and r c dat dada bhai nauru ji's famous theory was drain theory r c dat published books regarding this in this way the period of moderates were called as the age of liberal nationalism the period between 1885 to 1905 is called as the age of moderates you have already studied that traditionally the first 20 years of the indian national congress is called as the age of moderates the age between 1885 to 1905 common era these are all about the moderate leaders their way of fighting against the british and their demands let's move to another group of indian national congress that is radicals here moderates they followed constitutional methods like prayers and requests they tried to bring in political awareness among the people they organized public meetings discussed various burning issues submitted memorandums to the government submitted memorandums regarding the cutting down of military expenditure development of indian industries providing good education and programs for poverty alleviation but all these soft stands of the moderates towards the british made unhappy group within the congress to call them as political beggars radicals did not like the soft stance of the moderates who called moderates as political beggars radicals called moderates as political beggars then who were radicals the group congressmen the group of congressmen who criticized the soft stance of moderates are called as radicals here the group of congressmen who always criticized the soft stance soft st- sa- soft stance in the sense moderates had soft stance against the british they did not follow violent method who are the radical leaders here arvindo ghosh balagangadhar tilak 
लाला लजपत राय बिपिन चंद्र पाल दीस आर द मेन मेंबर्स ऑफ दिस रेडिकल ग्रुप दे अपोस्ड द स्टैंड ऑफ ब्रिटिश हू कंसिडर्ड नॉमिनेटिंग द इंडियन मेंबर्स टू इंडियन लेजिस्लेटिव असेंबली एज एन इंपॉर्टेंट फेवर in this way moderates opposed the rule of the british during that time one important event took place that led to the development of moderates that that incident was called as the partition of bengal the anti british sentiment was dominant in bengal it was the center of anti british protests anti british protests were more during the british rule in bengal in order to suppress these developments in order to suppress these anti british protests then viceroy lord curzon thought of dividing bengal in the name of administration he divided bengal in the name of administration in reality bengal had more concentration of muslim and hindu people the census report had indicated that the east part of bengal had more number of muslims and the west part of bengal had more number of hindus that's why in order to break the unity among hindus and muslims the british divided bengal in their 1905 bengal was divided by governor general bengal was divided by viceroy lord curzon like this the british thought of suppressing the spirit of national freedom struggle with the partition of bengal their main aim was to suppress the spirit of national freedom struggle that's why they divided bengal in their 1905 under the leadership of viceroy lord curzon but after the partition of bengal they had to face various opposition from indians the partition of bengal in 1905 was opposed by many but it was specially opposed by indian national congress still the bengali language could unite hindu and muslim communities during that time they celebrated raksha bandhan hindus and muslims celebrated raksha bandhan cultural festivals these festivals these oppositions showed that there was a unity between hindus and muslims they had to show the unity the partition of bengal resulted in the widespread protest across the country which was headed by indian national congress the radicals took the issue to the doorsteps of common people here the movement the protest was uh, undertaken by the radicals they took the issues to the doorsteps of common people they called for boycotting foreign goods british goods and the institutions that encourage it they opposed the british institutions indians were encouraged to use their own goods their own local goods because of all these protests finally the british government withdrew the bengal partition in their 1911 the partition of bengal bengal was divided into two parts east bengal and west bengal because east part of bengal had more number of muslims and the west part of bengal had more number of hindus in order to break the unity between hindus and muslims bengal was divided finally due to the protests from indians the division of bengal was withdrawn the british government withdrew 
द बेंगाल डिविजन इन देयर नाइनटीन लेवन नौ लेटस् डिस्कस अबउट दि कॉन्ट्रिब्यूशन आफ् बाल गंगाधर तिलक बाल गंगाधर तिलक वॉज वन आफ दि इंपार्टेंट लीडर आफ् रैडिकल ग्रूप हि डिक्लेर् दैट स्वराज इज मई बर्थ रेट एंड ई शल हैव इट अकॉर्डिंग टू हिम स्वराज is his right and he will definitely get it attaining complete freedom was the aim of radicals attaining complete freedom was the aim of bala gangadhar tilak in order to get complete freedom they organized the common people of india they attempted to organize people by employing religious celebrations too in order to organize the people they introduced religious celebrations what were those religious celebrations ganesha festival shivaji festival durga celebrations were organized all these ganesha shivaji festivals or celebrations were introduced by bala gangadhar tilak at the same time muslim league was born in their 1906 to protect the muslim identity tilak published kesari in marathi and maratha in english languages here the newspapers of balagangadhar tilak were kesari kesari was in marathi language maratha was in english language bala gangadhar tilak encouraged common people to protest against the british because of all his writings because of all these radical writings of tilak encouraged common people helped common people to protest against the british due to this finally british to harsh step by arresting him the british arrested tilak due to these developments and he wrote a book called geeta rahasya in the prison which further increased the freedom fever in this way geeta rahasya a book was also written by bala gangadhar tilak in the prison these are all about the contributions of bala gangadhar tilak let's move to revolutionaries here attaining complete freedom was the aim of radicals they did not follow constitutional methods prayer or petitions they had their own way of fighting against the british but revolutionaries they dreamed of attaining complete freedom their aim also complete freedom they believed that they can drive away the british by employing violent methods revolutionaries followed violent methods in order to fulfill their demands they established secret associations across the country started collecting weapons and money for an armed struggle against the british they tried to follow violent methods for this purpose they needed money they needed weapons they had given training also they started various secret organizations in england they started in usa and in india a secret organization started in england known as lotus and dragger arvindo ghosh who were in england supported the revolutionaries through this organization arvind ghosh arvind ghosh was in england he supported the revolutionaries through this organization which organizations lotus and dagger which was founded in england another important revolutionary organization was called gadar party gadar party was founded in usa and some important organizations secret organizations were also founded in india abhinav bharat and anushilan samiti 
these two are the important secret organizations which were founded in india these revolutionaries they used bombs and guns to achieve their goal in order to in order to achieve their goals they had their own bombs and guns the government tried to suppress them by arresting them hanging them unto death on the charges of sedition finally all these revolutionaries were hanged unto death because the government tried to suppress them by arresting them hanging them unto death because of the harsh method undertaken by the government revolutionaries were hanged to death there were many number of revolutionaries who were those revolutionaries let's see the important leaders of this revolutionaries arvind ghosh vd savarkar ashwini kumar datta raja narayan bose sitaram rajguru chapekar brothers vishnu shastri sham ji krishna varma ras bihari bose madam kama kudiram bose ram prasad bismil ashwakul khan bhagat singh chandrashekar azad jatindra das these were the important revolutionary leaders the dream of revolutionaries to bring freedom to india quickly did not materialize completely their main aim was to get freedom still they were the fountains of spirit to the indian freedom movement the dream of revolutionaries to get freedom to india could not completed even though it was not completed they were the fountains of spirit to the indian freedom movement many of the radicals later became revolutionaries continued their efforts earlier radicals earlier some leaders stayed in radicals later they became revolutionaries and continued their effort arvind ghosh was one such leader you have already studied that arvind ghosh was the radical leader arvind ghosh bipin chandra pal lala rajapat rai balagangadhar tilak are the main members of this radical group but later vd savarkar later arvind ghosh who became revolutionaries the role of revolutionaries is important in the annals of indian history because they dreamed of attaining complete freedom they believed that they can drive away the british by employing violent methods they had their own secret associations across the country and they started collecting weapons and money for an armed struggle against the british they provided training they used bombs they used guns to achieve their goal in this way the role of revolutionaries is important in the annals of history dear students till now we have discussed history lesson number 7 freedom movement i have given the links of textbook questions additional questions one more questions and mcq question of this lesson in the description you can watch those videos by clicking on the links thank you for watching this video